All right, guys, some recent uh, horror pickups. So let's start with these. Uh, these were all pretty cheap. Uh, I haven't shown them before. I don't know how recent they were, but they're relatively recent. They're all horror. Kind of go down a horror path for a little bit. I think guys like Sammy, uh, Manny Raposo, uh, Lousberg, 7-Eleven, Toddy Walnuts, Aaron Penn, especially probably Aaron Penn, who's been encouraging me to uh, kind of go back to my horror, uh, my love of uh, early horror, or my earlier love of horror, I guess I should say. When I was a kid, I, I watched horror movies almost exclusively. I mean, they, they were the ones I was I gravitated towards. I am not the fan of the slasher uh, film that a lot of folks are. In fact, most of the ones I mentioned, that's their favorite genre. They like the gore, they like the blood, <clears throat> they like the um, the variety of kills, the different ways that you know people get killed. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm more a fan of the mystery behind it, if, if that makes sense. I guess I'm more in tune with Parsnip Burger, who I think uh, Matthew tends to go more in that vein where he likes the mystery of it. So if early on I know who the killer is and why they're killing people, and it's just a matter of how many times they can kill people before they get caught, less interested. Uh, not Don't really care all that much about the uh, the blood and the gore. Uh, it's not that I dislike it. It's just that I'm not attracted to it in any way. Um, anyway, that said, here's some movies that I picked up that sounded interesting to me. Uh, most of these are blind buys. A couple of them are not blind buys. So <clears throat> the first one is uh, Devil's Due. Zach Guilford and uh, Allison Miller, who I don't know, uh, but uh, basically the plot of this appears to be she is pregnant. Uh, they are going on a uh, trip and uh, find themselves, uh, she finds herself delivering far sooner than she thought she would. And uh, obviously from the title, um, you can tell things may not go exactly the way they thought. I didn't pay that for it, by the way. Um, this one appears to be new. I haven't uh, opened it to see. But whenever it has that on it, a lot of times at FYI I find out that I find later on that it's actually new. And that I'm not sure that'll be the case with this one. And then a lot of times when that's the case, you get the you get the uh, ultraviolet copy and everything else. I couldn't tell if it was shrink wrapped or not, so I don't know that. So it was already wrapped. It may not be. And if it's not, it's not. That's that's still okay. Um like I said, I didn't pay what, what it says on this, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, so this is the kind of movie that I sometimes like. You know, it's kind of the Rosemary ba Rosemary's Baby type thing. I like things, uh, occult, occult type things. Um, I like, I don't mind uh, slasher films if, in fact, the, uh, I guess I do mind slasher films. Uh -huh. And I've got one in the pile here that I just watched, and, and I'll make a comment on that when I when I get to it. But um, I'm just going to see if this thing's new. Apologize for that, but uh, we'll take about a second to open it up. I can always edit this out if I feel like it's too cumbersome as I babble on here. Yeah, that should come out now. Let's see if this is actually new or not. No, okay, false, false uh, hope here. What do they do here? I don't even open this. Is this one they slipped down the middle? Or are they just... I don't know. It doesn't appear to even be opened. If they opened it, this this top is intact. So if they opened it, they did one of these to get it out. I don't know. I'm going to say they never opened it. It sure doesn't look it to me. I'm going to guess it's never been opened. And that uh, I'm going to find that they took the shrink wrap off it and just didn't, ever, didn't bother to watch it. And then just traded it in as such. I guess I'll find that out as I go to check it out. And that was one of the things that attracted me to it, the fact that I thought it might be new. I know that sounds silly. But getting the uh, getting the digital copy, the digital HD copy, for the same price as uh, a used one is a good thing. Most of the time you don't get that uh, when you open these things up. Most of the time it's it's been old enough where it's, it's either, you know, no longer good. I hate when they put these stickers on. I guess I'll just have to live with it. So that's Devil's Due. The next is one I have seen before. Uh, been a while, but I have seen it. I'm just checking the time. And that is a Josh Hartnett in uh, 30 Days of Night. I mentioned before I'm a big vampire fan. This one appealed to me because I think they're in Alaska, if I'm not mistaken. And so it's dark much of the time. Uh, 
great place for vampires to hang out if you think about it. <clears throat> this one did not have the slip. Kind of disappointed with that, but uh, um, you know the plus side with the, with no slip when you get a place like FYA, they put all these stickers all over it anyway. So getting the stickers off sometimes is problematic to begin with. This one can I can still open it even with all these stickers on it. So nothing much to look at in the inside. Thirty days for night. Thirty days of night. And nothing much more. They get a little booklet here of uh, 3D movies. There's some picture there. I remember seeing this and thinking it was pretty cool. Like, they're doomed. I, I like a movie where it looks like they're doomed and they try to find a way around it. So, let's take the used sticker off it. Maybe if I can, without leaving residue. That's usually the one I can get off for some reason. I don't know if they use a different sticker residue on these for that part than they do for their price tickets. Uh, then they get clever on there. I'll leave it on. Okay, that's my problems. All right, 30 days for, of night. Next, total impulse buy was 250 The case was cracked right here, um, which I'll probably figure out something on that. I may just go back to them and tell them I got a cracked case and make it good. Um, this one came with four pairs of uh, 3D glasses. And... Uh, it was right before, uh, right before 2009 is when it came out because it was right before uh, Saw 5 or 4 came out. Anyway, so you get four pairs of glasses with it and you get uh, My Bloody Valentine in 3D. I saw the scenes of this. This is a slasher. Um, I don't, I know enough of the plot. It was some sort of a mining uh, issue that took place years earlier. I know this guy's floating around in a mining costume killing people. Probably, probably, uh, probably a relative of somebody who died in the in the thing, and they're blaming the people who didn't get him out or something. Is my guess, but it's just a guess. I've never seen it. Uh, quarantine just sounded interesting. It's a news crew that goes into uh, it's like a CDC facility or something, and something something happens while they're in there. I don't know if it's a fire or some sort of an accident, and sort of like the stand or something, people get infected. It's like a zombie-like condition. Sorry about that got the windows open today. It's a beautiful day outside. I usually just have lights in here. It's like a cave. And uh, it truly is a man cave most of the time. But I've got the windows open and the, the uh, screens are open. And actually it's nice today. So um, anyway. Now a couple DVDs. Uh, one of my favorite horror movies. Stephen King's It. I know technically it's a miniseries. I don't care. How many people actually watch the miniseries really? Uh, it was on years and years ago when it was on the miniseries. And I think most people have seen this thing in a DVD format, probably, uh, who have seen it. Or I think they've shown it as a movie before, even if it's over a couple nights. Uh, the miniseries was on years and years ago. I can't remember when it was on anymore. Years ago, 1990, I guess, something like that. Yeah, 1990. Um, seems like it's even older than that. Is that what it was? Yeah. I guess that's what it was. Um, love this movie. Hate the fact that it's a flipper, you know, and a, and a recycle thing on top of it. But uh, I've always loved this movie. I like the first half better than the second half, and I think everybody does. But I think as a whole, it works really well. The first half works great, and the second half works about as well as it could have. Obviously, fighting a clown um, when you're a child is a lot scarier proposition as an adult, I would think. But... Uh, in any event, Stephen King's It, and what a great job uh, by all, but especially Tim Curry in this. Just fantastic acting job there, I thought. Suitably evil. This one I heard Aaron Penn talking about. I'd never seen it. And uh, there's not much to show on the inside, so, and I hate these cases. I know Aaron said he doesn't mind these cases. I always hated them. I got rid of most of mine like this years ago. I still have a handful. But I'm talking about uh, The Exorcist Three. Well, what I liked about this was that William Peter Blatty, uh, who wrote The Exorcist, uh, actually directed it and wrote the screenplay <coughs> based on a, a, a novel he wrote um, called Legion. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was as good as The Exorcist, but I didn't think I was going to. Uh, there's some special features on it, not a lot, but uh, I still thought it was a pretty good movie. Not a great movie, but a pretty good movie. Now, the slasher that I bought. Well, I guess that, I guess that my bloody Valentine's a slasher, isn't it? 
This one is too, and I'm gonna be short. Let me show this side that everybody else shows. I have it reversed because I just thought the other side was cooler. But this is the 40th anniversary. It's a Blu-ray, but it looks like the size of a DVD. And it's the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 40th Anniversary Edition. I like the fact that it had a bonus disc with it <clears throat> that had um, all sorts of commentaries from two different commentaries from Toby Hooper, um, Gunnar Hansen on it. Although I don't know what he had, what did he have to say? He didn't really. He said nothing in the film. He basically just clubs people, so I don't know what there, what insights he could provide, but uh, at least not on the first one. Uh, maybe you can, maybe you can talk about how they cut him out of the uh, out of one of them out of the remake. I guess they cut him out of. Um, anyway, uh, there's a lot of extras on this, as you can see on the back. Uh, there's four feature commentaries and a ton of collector's edition extras. Uh, I made the comment a couple times that. You know, I didn't care for this movie when I first saw it, and so I thought, you know what, uh, it was on sale, and I thought, let me pick it up and watch it. I like it better like this, by the way, yeah, behind the closed door. Um, I liked it better than I did the first time, that's all I'll say. Will it make my top 50? Well, I'm up to the top 20 now, I believe. Uh, will it make my top 20? You'll have to wait and see. Uh, Sammy and I, every Monday, assuming he ready this Monday do a uh, do our list after uh, all those guys I mentioned and others uh, who I didn't mention do their lists uh, we should do our list we're gonna try to predict this week what they put in their top 10 and what their what, what we think might be in their top 10 or near the top and then also what we think their number one might be somebody's number one might be this it wouldn't be mine I can tell you that but somebody might pick this thing uh, for their number one I'd be hard-pressed to put it anywhere near there. In fact, may not even make my top 20, so tune in and see if it does or not. Uh, though an honorable mention, at least for it, for being uh, for being a leader. This, this in many ways, started the slasher uh, trend of the 80s. It seemed like after this movie came out, everybody wanted to do something like it. Uh, so you had a slew of movies in the 80s that were all uh, devoted to slashers. Uh, some of them, I think, better than this, but but arguably this this is one of the better ones. It certainly is thought so by many horror fans. And then this one was kind of a... I wasn't going to pick this up, but the price was right. I, I couldn't... I, I googled it. I couldn't find any less anywhere. I, I'm not... I don't care about getting the Blu-ray on this. I didn't care about getting the Blu-ray, by the way, on Texas Chainsaw Massacre either. Uh, on a lot of horror movies, I, I don't care that they're in high def. Uh, I know that might seem wrong, but uh, on a lot of them I don't care. On some of them I do. If I really like the film, I'm going to want it on high def. Uh, with horror movies, more than likely I'm interested in seeing the film f to see the film, not because I think it's a great film or a great movie, if that makes any sense. And there are some exceptions, and those I have on Blu-ray. Uh, so the ones I have on Blu-ray, you can guess... Uh, uh, that I probably have it in my top 50. Not always. I just show some that aren't going to be my top 50. But uh, and this one, I don't know. But this one, uh, I haven't seen it in a long time. This is the 8 film collection. And the reason I got it was because of the price. I got I get 10% off. So I, they had it for $19.99. I get it for another 10% uh, off. So I get it for $17.99. 8 movies. This is the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street collection. This is all embossed here, which I thought was good. The 8 and the, the Nightmare on Elm Street is embossed. Uh, I like the character of Freddy Krueger. I found him amusing and suitably amusing. Some of these people are uh, uh, amusing because they're stupid. Uh, he was amusing because he was clever, I thought. Uh, makeup job great on Freddy Krueger. Uh, like the first one quite a bit. I haven't watched it in years, so I'll be watching this before my next uh, top ten. Or... 20 to 11. So that's the horror pickups, guys. Take care, and uh, see you next time.